These are the Master Fan MF120 Halo fans. Now, I've got the black version with me today. They do come in white as well. And I've got the three pack, obviously, with the controller, but they do come as individual fans. Uh, but included in the box are the three fans themselves. Now, they're protected by a little cardboard shroud there but you get the fan itself. So included in the accessories kit is going to be the controller itself, the documentation, of course, uh, a USB cable to hook this up to your motherboard, got a PWM extension cable, it looks like, uh, SATA power connected for the controller, and it does include these cable clips. This is for the RGB connections. You know, sometimes those three pin RGB connectors come apart nice and easy. Uh, it's got just standard fan screws here. There's no long ones included to mount these up against a radiator. So upon getting these out of the box, it's going to leave a good first impression with you. It feels like a nice, sturdy, well-built fan. The quality of the materials feels good in the hand. It's got rubber dampening pads on both the front and the back, as you would expect. The RGB elements, it's got a loop on the front, loop on the back, which is a nice touch, and then that loop is exposed on the side. I've always really liked the look of the Halo fans. Uh, in the rear, the cable up to the hub is exposed and the hub itself just has a sticker with the electrical specifications and the brand logo on there. So, so the controller itself, it's an all plastic construction, but it looks good. It's got kind of a brushed aluminum look on the front, but it is plastic. It's got the logo kind of embossed into the front here. Overall, it's a good looking controller, but typically it's gonna be stuck in the back of your case somewhere where you're never really gonna look at it much anyways, right? Uh, it is a magnetically attached controller, so that's a nice touch. It's also got some rubber feet on the bottom here. If it's gonna stick down in the bottom of your case, get a little bit of grip there. Uh, it's got three three pin RGB ports on the side here, enough to put all of these on here. Of course, you could leverage putting some hubs and things in there like that, which we can explore later on if we want to. Uh, on the other side, it's got a port for the SATA power cable. And the other port here is the USB cable to connect this back to your motherboard. Uh, it's just, it's a USB connection to the controller and then a nine pin header on your motherboard or a powered USB hub, wherever you're gonna put that. Now, basically the RGB connections, if you choose to do it this way, uh, this will be your source uh, back to the controller. So we'll get that into the controller and then I've just daisy chained the other three here into these connectors and then use the clips on here. Now, so after you get your RGB connections made, you'll need to find a place to connect the PWM connectors. Now, a port on your motherboard is fine. A PWM hub will be okay or any other controller that has a PWM connection should be all right. Now, Cooler Master is including a splitter cable, which is gonna take all three fans and combine it into a single connector so that you can kind of uh, save space with that. Now, you can go ahead and just make all your connections to the one side of the cable. And once you have all of that done, the only thing to note here is one of these connectors is a different color. Uh, the only difference with that is, is this is a four pin connector. And all that is is that fourth pin is the RPM signal and that's what's gonna be fed back to your motherboard and then it will control all of these as a group. You're not gonna get individual uh, curve control over each fan. Of course, you'll wanna connect in the SATA power cable to the controller. It's just a single cable, it's keyed, so you can only do it one way easy enough and then make a SATA power connection. And then go ahead and connect the USB cable into this. And you'll wanna connect this up to your motherboard on just any free nine pin USB header uh, or powered USB hub should be fine as well. Okay, so after you've got your RGB connections and PWM connections made, power on your PC, uh, just ensure that your fans are running and you should have some default RGB lighting on here. Uh, once you're good with that, go ahead and download and install the Cooler Master Master Plus software. Just double click and run the application and go ahead and select whatever language you have. And for this part, I'm just accepting the defaults. Now, initially it may come up and ask you to upgrade the firmware of this device. It did the first time I played with it. Uh, so go ahead and just upgrade the firmware, whatever happens to be there. If you'd never get that message, the firmware is probably up to date and you're good to go. Uh, on the main screen here, the Cooler Master system, you get some of the basic stats of your system, CPU temperature, load, usage, uh, things like that. Now, all I have from Cooler Master attached is the LED controller itself, so there's not a whole lot here. So you can come over here and you can create different profiles that will open different applications. Uh, power mode and control hub, I don't have the devices that will utilize those. So for today, you should have the LED controller A1 show up here. Go ahead and click that, and the first thing you wanna do is come over here to setup. Now, here you get a representation of the controller, of course, and you get the three ports, one, two, and three. Now, these are Gen 2 ARGB devices, which means the controller can auto-detect them, and it looks like it has done so. It's detected, you know, port one, device one, port one, device two, 
port one device three. Now I did install the 140 millimeter MF140 halo fan. It doesn't auto detect that, so it must just be a gen one fan. But uh, down here at the bottom, you can see that gen two is clicked. You can just select this little box here and it will ask you for the product series. Of course, you know, if it's gen two, you can just put ARGB gen two and it should automatically detect the number of LEDs on here, 72. So each one has 24 times three. That's the correct number of LEDs. So if it's not Gen 2, what you can do is you can uncheck this. And then from here, you get a drop down box to tell it which product is here. So in this case, it is a master fan. And then over here, you can tell it which one you have. Now I do have an MF140 halo fan here. And because it already knows how many LEDs is there, it's just already lit up and ready to go. All right, so that's what's on port number two here. On port number three, I don't have anything, so you can just leave it here. There's zero LEDs here. So once you've completed the setup and it matches your system, go ahead and click over here to ARGB lighting. And from here, you can select which LED mode you wanna put this into. Now this is gonna be kind of global to all of your different ports. And from here, you can select which one you want. So Spectrum, for example, uh, if you can change the color or you know do some of the settings over here, uh, these will be illuminated, but they're not in this case. So spectrum, it just is what it is. The only thing you can change here is the speed. And if you go to the very bottom end here, obviously it's slow. And if you come over here to fast, it changes it to fast. Now static, as you can see, it does light up the components here. It's white by default. If we click on green, you know, red, blue, purple, changes the colors here. Obviously we can manipulate the exact RGB numbers if there's a very specific shade you need. You can do some preset colors and of course you can customize colors and you can turn the brightness up and down as necessary. But of course a static color doesn't have speed on it so this is not illuminated. Uh, reload, again you can change the colors here if you want or you can select random which will gray that out but it will just change the colors at random for you. Very cool, recoil. Uh, really just kind of the same thing. We can change all of the different colors if we have a specific need or we can do random. Of course, we can change the speed of those animations. Uh, breathing, fairly typical there. Again, we can do random and we can change the speed if we desire. Refill, same thing. Now, these last two here are kind of pretty cool. Uh, this is where you start gaining some power over what you can do with it. You can do a multi-layer setup. Now, what that does is up here on the top panel here, it then exposes that you can set each fan individually. So on any other setting down here, it's applying it to everything on the controller. But multi-layer, you can change it individually. So fan one over here, uh, we can go over here and put that to spectrum. Uh, fan number two. Now what I do like is there's an identify button up here. So if you have a ton of fans on your system and you're not sure which one it is, you can click identify. That's a very cool feature. So, and it will just blink that fan knowing that this is uh, what it is. So we can go ahead and change that to whatever we want. Fill flow, number three, we can just put, uh, we can turn it off if we want. And then of course on port two, we have this 140 millimeter. Let's go ahead and put it on, uh, let's put it on a static and green. But that's multi-layer. Uh, if you had other devices here, you could change those as well. Now custom, kind of expands all this even a little bit further. By default, it's gonna show everything off, but from here we can start applying individual colors to individual LEDs. So if we click on that fan, we identify it, so we know it's this first one up here to the right, and then we can go ahead and select this LED here, and we can change the color on it. Okay, so you can see that part of the fan is green, the other half is kind of still a white. We can come back out here and go to one, two, and then we can, of course, we could change it to like all red, you get the basic idea. You can come in here and just manipulate whatever you want to set on it. Okay, so we have it all red. Now we can hit the overlay button up here. And now what this does, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six settings for each fan here. This kind of cycles through here. So the first one, they're all off at this point. But if we put like static, 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 and static, it's just gonna always stay static here, but we can change it and we can do reload, recoil, breathing, refill, and then turn off. And it's going to stay on static for a minute. Now it's going to keep uh, the LEDs that you selected in the first step. So half of them are green, half of them are gonna be white. Whatever you happen to set there, whatever color on that previous screen, 
is what it's going to apply. And then it's just going to cycle through static, reload, recoil, breathing, refill, and turn off. It's like about 10 seconds in between each one. I don't see anywhere where I can change the number of seconds in between uh, effects. But now we're on off, now we're back to static. So you get the main idea. And of course you can select each different channel uh, in the same fashion. Go ahead and close that when you're done. Come back here and then you can select each fan obviously individually and you can change it however you want. Now if we come back over to Cooler Master System and go up to System Lighting, we can select Screen Follower 1.0 and then click the little teeny play button here. It's not super intuitive as to what it's doing, but then this should follow whatever is on your screen. So if we move it around, you should be able to get some different effects on here. Of course, you know, you can turn this on while you're playing a game or something like that. Obviously, if, you know, if we go a green screen, it's going to be there. Red's going to turn it red. And obviously that'll kind of change around as you're moving screens around. You kind of get the idea there. All right, so if you come over here to Screen Follower 2.0 and you upload a profile image, uh, basically what you're doing, this is just a background image here. So I'll just select a red background. This is just any old image that you have. Uh, but from here you can map an area. So basically you're taking the same concept as the 1.0, but you're just mapping out areas to different ports. So let's say we want this uh, side of the screen and we want it to apply to LED port one. And then let's go ahead and create uh, four more. So I'm gonna create a zone here for number two, port two, and then we're gonna do port three over here and then port four we're going to do down across the bottom here now once we've applied that we can go ahead and play that particular profile and it will go ahead and start turning the leds based on whatever is in the screen at that time very cool it gives you something to play around with and have some fun with and you should be able to create some pretty cool looks with that all right, so back to system lighting. We can come here to Lighting Maker. Uh, this is another area that you could end up spending a lot of time on and gives you some pretty creative control over all these different channels. Basically what this is is a timeline here. Now if we go ahead and hit the play button, it will play through here. And you can see we have channel one, two, three, and four. And it just plays these lighting effects over each individual channel at the time that it's lit here. So you can kind of synchronize your fans to music. In fact, there are some music uh, elements in here. So if we go, we wish you a green, red Christmas, uh, this will play that song. You can see the sound wave here. And then of course the lights are predetermined to uh, dance around to that particular song. Okay, but you get the main idea. Now they've included a bunch of different uh, sequences for you, but you can create your own. So if you come up here to new, uh, create a blank pattern. And then from here, you can go ahead and select on this. And from here, you can kind of take off the fades in and the fades out and things like that. But it just leaves you a blank uh, piece here. From here, you can go ahead and click this little plus sign up here and it's gonna add a gradient stop. And so if you add, you know, four or five, six, and then click these little buttons, you can assign a color. This is just really a simplistic explanation of it here. Uh, but let's do that. Let's do green over here at the end. Now we can go ahead and add this element, of course, into the timeline. Now what we can do is highlight it and we can copy it and we can just kind of keep copying it. And that's kind of what they did on this previous one. Now, if we go ahead and play that, of course, the one fan here, the 140 millimeter fan is just following along with that. Now you could add your own music and things in here and kind of sequence all of your lights and just have a lot of fun with it. I recommend getting here and kind of play around with it. There's some pretty cool things you can do with this, but you can save these patterns here and then come back to them at a later time. But that's just a quick overview of the Cooler Master Plus software. It's actually pretty cool. It gives you some pretty good control over the lights and gives you some things to play around with and do some customizations in there. Overall, I think these are really good looking fans. Uh, the RGB lighting on them is nice and bright. Looks great from all angles. Uh, you know, the fan speed is controllable. The Master Plus software is pretty good. And of course, because it's three pin ARGB, which is the standard, you can take this and put these fans on other controllers as well. You're not stuck with the Master Plus stuff uh, or their controller. So you can use this elsewhere, which is always a plus. Just check the power specifications of your controller. All right, but that is it. That is the Cooler Master MF120 Halo fan kit. Uh, overall, really satisfied with it. It's a pretty cool fan. 
overall, there's nothing incredibly fancy about it. It just does what it does and it does it well and it looks good doing it. So, so going over the specifications real quick, each fan does have a rifle bearing. Uh, the RPM range is 650 to 1800 RPM. At the max range, it should give you 47.2 CFM. Uh, also at the maximum RPM, you should get 1.6 millimeters H2O pressure out of it. That's what they're listing on there. Uh, the noise is rated at six to 30 decibels. The fans do have a four pin PWM connection and a three pin standard ARGB connector. The current draw on the 12 volt motor side is rated at 0.25 amps. It is listing a safety current at 0.37 amps. Uh, that's kind of a safety margin for when it's starting up, so you should take that into account. So each fan does have 24 RGB LEDs, and Cooler Master is listing the current draw of those LEDs to be 0.55 amps. I would recommend taking a look at these if you're looking for just a good basic fan that looks great, and you like the Master Plus software, or you want to pair these up into the Corsair system or something like that. Uh, you can get them adapted into a lot of different things. That is going to do it for today. Thanks for watching.